What is Gokuhide people and welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Bob Lamb going out in my garden to check how all my industry plants are doing. Someone told me they saw a wild cochise out there getting eaten by a rabbit but I could have sworn I never planted one of those out there. And oh wait, look at that. Cochise isn't an industry plant after all. He's a fungus. Nah, I'm playing but he definitely ain't an industry plant and here's why. Let's talk about it. Okay, so if you true Bob Gang, then you have probably seen a couple videos on this channel discussing Cochise biting Cardi and Uzi or being a Cardi clone, but don't get it twisted. I mess with Cochise heavy and I don't fully believe in those accusations. I was simply discussing what others were alleging. Don't let the titles fool you. But to get right into the video, yesterday a fellow YouTuber, shout out, you dig, four eyes, two G's here, uploaded a video centered around allegations that Cochise might be an industry plant due to the supposed increase in music video budgets as of late, as well as Cochise's recent record deal. By the way, according to Genius, the definition of an industry plant is an artist who has major slash indie label backing their movement, but presents themselves as a homegrown startup label to create a pseudo organic following. They act as if things are miraculously happening for them based on their talent via blog coverage, media coverage, MTV playing their videos, etc. So essentially the word on the block that I will be defending against is that Cochise has a label backing him and that is the reason he blew up all of of a sudden. And fortunately, we have a special appearance from Yadig, who I mentioned a little bit earlier to further explain his side of the story. Okay, first of all, shout out Bob Gang, shout out Bob Lamb, shout out Coaches, big ups to all your success, and thank you for letting me share my piece. Okay, first of all, I just want to make it clear, I never really came out and outright said that Coach Ice is an industry plant. The only thing that I ever pointed to that I didn't like was the fact that he did sign to Columbia and that it was never officially announced, or if it was, that's my bad, but I wasn't able to find it with any of my research. As you can see on his Twitter, there's no mention of it, on Columbia's website, there's no mention of it, and on his Instagram, there's no mention of it either, which, as I'm sure a lot of you guys know, is a tactic used a lot by labels to try to fake the fact that artists are independent while they've been signed for a minute. However, I gotta take some blame in this case as well. The title of the video was definitely a little bit clickbaity. Plus, on top of that, maybe some of my takes and some of my opinions on the video were a little harsh and a little misguided and a little miscalculated. I'm willing to admit that. No YouTuber gets everything perfect and we definitely don't aim to please everybody with our videos. So, I do understand why I kinda got some criticism and some hate. Again, I completely understand, but I just wanna say again, I never explicitly called him an industry plan. The only thing that kind of rubbed me the wrong way was the whole sign-in situation. But again, shout out Bubba Lamb, shout out Bob Gang, shout out Coaches. Big ups for all your success and thank you Bubba Lamb for letting me share my piece. Now as a YouTuber, just like you dig, I second everything he said regarding possibly having takes that not everyone agrees with. And then technically, there is no correct answer for industry plan as a term after all is just created by fans. It's not like it's explicitly written in any dictionary. Not to mention the fact that we are human and simply just give our thoughts on various subjects and hope to inspire a discussion in all of your minds whether you agree or disagree with us all the time. Now before everyone starts thinking I'm throwing shade, I'm not at all. I simply have a different perspective regarding what's going on behind the scenes being from South Florida where Cochise came out of too. So as I was saying, the allegations regarding Cochise being a plant derived from his music video hatchback looking a lot more professional than all his previous music videos such as Redhead, Dig Me Freestyle, and others. And while this may be true, it's definitely not due to any label support. Now I'm not going to claim I'm an OG Cochise listener because I honestly didn't discover his music until pretty much exactly a year ago with the Dig Me Freestyle music video and at this time I swear to god this man only had like 10k followers but only a few weeks later he was growing faster than Academics' stomach after he first discovered McDonald's and here we are with Hatchback likely charting on Billboard very soon. But before we discuss how Cochise actually blew up, therefore refuting any claims that he could be at all an industry plant, I want to research a bit into his history as a musician. Cochise's professional career started roughly five years ago, or quite possibly earlier, but that's how far back his oldest song on SoundCloud goes, and ever since then he's been dropping pretty consistently, also likely taking down songs as he sees fit that he didn't feel represented his brand, so if you find a large gap between releases that could indicate industry plant characteristics, that is probably the reason. But I guess two years ago, Cochise finally felt comfortable enough with his music and sound to release some visuals for his fans as he had grown his following on SoundCloud quite a bit. Nothing serious, but you know, people were fiending to know how the man moved. Did he dance like Michael Jackson or was he as stiff as a dad getting a rectal exam? You'll understand that joke a little later on in the video. But as I said, about two years ago, Cochise dropped his first music video titled OIU, which had a pretty dope concept even though he didn't put that much money behind the production yet. 
yet it was almost like a vlog, but you could already tell the creativity was there. Not to mention, Cochise had a much less developed sound than he does now, although you can still tell he has a very similar flow to this day. And for the next year, he dropped several more songs, including another music video to a track called Dala, and finally leading us to the start of Cochise's come up and when I personally discovered his music, for I was on YouTube like any other average day, and I was simply just recommended his Dig Me Freestyle music video, which had like 30k views at the time or something like that. It was absolutely blowing up, and I think everyone that saw the music music video was thinking the exact same thing because you could already see all the comments saying here before a million or here before this blows up and there on afterwards pretty much all of Cochise's music videos and songs were blowing up not only because man's found the hot sound that his fans mess with but also y'all already know how the YouTube algorithm is when you watch a video by one creator or artist it starts recommending you all their other videos and songs or in other words it's all organically pushed to you but something to note regarding this specific video and all the others following before before we move on is that it was edited by a dude named Chivalry. Just keep that in mind for later on. After the Dig Me Freestyle music video popped off, Coaches did what most artists do, which was drop an EP or some sort of project to capitalize the newfound success. And about a month after that, he dropped two more singles, one named Arlong Park and another most notably titled Hatchback with just the audio, no visual whatsoever yet. And even with Hatchback just being audio, it still blew up because of how fire it was, hitting a million views within the next couple of months. But before that happened, Coaches drops another music video called Redhead that would change his life forever. For this next music video popped off even more than the aforementioned Dig Me Freestyle, gaining over a million views in the coming months, all thanks to memes and President Trump's favorite app, TikTok. More specifically, in the third verse of the music video, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but Koji's goes from already high-pitched voice to Super Saiyan high-pitched voice, where in the memes literally said, when you get kicked in the balls while you're recording at the studio, or something like that. Additionally, he puts on a white glove like Michael Jackson and dances in the middle of all of his boys, which I was referring to earlier with the joke if you didn't catch it. However, the last piece to Koji's Egyptian puzzle was the fact that this very song blew up on TikTok, likely due to all the memes with the ultra baby voice because TikTok is technically an app where you attempt to make memes and outbirth the redhead dank sound. Which, if you are unfamiliar with the term dank, is essentially a heavily distorted version of a song. Wherein then a bunch of people started using this sound on TikTok for their own videos as they heard it and it kept growing more and more organically to the point where it was literally a trending sound on the app. And as with many songs on TikTok, people started searching the lyrics or name of the sound on Google and found Cochise's redhead song on all platforms, increasing the streams on YouTube, Spotify, and the like, all occurring throughout late 2019 and early 2020. It's also important to note that throughout all this time, Kochi's remained independent, although he was receiving label offers from pretty much everywhere. By the way, the Redhead music video was also shot and directed by Chivalry. But moving on, a couple months pass after letting Redhead blow up to its full potential, Kochi's drops another single titled Milo, and I believe Elbow Room that he solely released on SoundCloud, but more significantly, he began shooting the music video for Hatchback, which he knew had to be a banger, because now he was low-key mainstream if he was already trending on TikTok. And around May, he finally drops the long anticipated video that he had been teasing for months and shit goes brazy. 100k views in a week and after the YouTube algorithm picked the video up, it was game over. Almost 5 million views up until this point followed, but in regards to the video quality, not gonna lie, the production was next level compared to all his past videos. However, I think this can all be attributed to the amount of growth and experience he and his videographer had gained in the five months between Hatchback and the previous hit, Redhead. I mean, personally, five months ago, I only had like 5K subs and was smacking homeless lady cheeks in the dark alleyway, so I know how it is. Not to mention, again, Hatchback was shot and edited by Chivalry, who we referred to previously on a couple occasions, already Already including the Dig Me Freestyle and Redhead videos. But to continue, at this point in time, Cochise's career was getting out of hand and was likely planning for the future as to how he can continue progressing his career and make it a full-time income. And as I mentioned before, throughout all this time, he was receiving label deals from many of the majors like Warner, Columbia, etc. 
which he was still apprehensive to sign with because he wanted to own all his masters and retain creative control over when and how he can drop music. Since a lot of times artists sign, they are almost instantly set on the shelf, overlooked by all the solidified artists already, and simply not able to legally release any music as they are not prioritized by the label. So during this time of contemplation as to if Kochi's wanted to sign and or what type of deal he would be willing to sign, because I know for a fact he didn't want to at first, he drops two more songs called Jones Garden and Yes Sir, which are clearly still independently released songs if we check the copyright claims on the respective YouTube videos. For example, his latest release, Taxin, states that it is licensed to Sony Music Entertainment on behalf of Columbia, whereas the Jones Garden and Yes Sir remain blank. Which finally leads me to Cochise's latest single release titled Taxin that dropped on July 24th, so about two weeks ago, wherein this is actually his first official release under Columbia Records. But it's not what you think either, for Cochise has a much differently structured deal than most artists in that it's only a publishing contract rather than a quote, record deal. For those who are unaware, a record deal is defined as an agreement between a recording artist and a record label. The artist makes a record for the label to sell and promote, and the record label will give the artist every possible tool to create Create this. The record label is involved in the recording, production, pressing, distribution, marketing, and merchandising of your songs. Labels actually act as banks in a sense that artists receive in advance and then they would have to recoup it with sales. With this advance, the artist can make a record that the record label would be able to promote. So again, your typical 360 deal wherein the artist received an advance from the label to use to create whatever videos and music they need to succeed in addition to being able to use the label studios among countless resources. Whereas a publishing deal is an agreement between artists and publishing companies. The company can claim your work in exchange for promoting it. Publishing companies control several aspects of your work such as performing acts rights, mechanical rights, and synchronization. In addition, publishers can be proactive in that they can build links with music directors and other performers and try to convince these people to play or perform the artist's songs. So essentially, a pub deal, aka Columbia in Cochise's case, gives no advance or at least a much less significant one in exchange for music, nor do they have any control over the production of the recording or video, so it's very unlikely that his music video production budget all of a sudden increased tenfold due to label support. Rather, man's pockets got fatter organically and thus had more money individually to invest in himself. Additionally, the label is barely involved in any of the creation process as Cochise records and creates pretty much independently. The only thing Columbia really does is distribute Cochise's music to all platforms and optimize individual tracks or projects revenue using several methods including but not limited to playlist placements, mass copyright claiming whenever someone uses his song in their video or content, and the like. Not to mention, apparently he's only signed for one project before he can evaluate the growth and reassess if he wants to distribute under a major label again. But as we discussed throughout this whole video, it took almost five years to get to this point as he just signed recently. In fact, Hatchback is also signed to the pub deal as Yadig mentioned in his video. However, it was only signed months after Kochi's released it and after he already popped off. And if you still don't believe that Kochi's is not in fact an industry plan, whose organic growth has gotten him to this point? we can clearly witness the very slow growth from a broad perspective of his YouTube channel and that over a year ago after the release of the Dig Me Freestyle he experienced his first spike in growth of 70k more views in one month to another then he jumps another 50k the next month and remains fairly consistent without any more surges until the exponential curve of social media took over only recently in May with Hatchback which again was an independent release at first. So with that, it's your boy Bob Lamb chopping up some of the industry plants I've been growing for the past couple months into a salad. All I need is some of that Dijon Cochise dressing to sprinkle on top. But let me know in the comments if you still think Cochise is an industry plant. Make sure to like and subscribe while you're at it for the latest hip hop news, drama, and analysis videos as well as to follow me on all my socials in the description to join the Bob Gang if you with it. Peace out, cutty people. Nothing.